Okay. Uh, all right. So to talk about performance, I actually want to bring up my solution to assignment three. I want to show you how it, it looks like. And you can think of this as a benchmark for your, for your, um, for your own solution. Okay. So I have my solution in here already done and I will have to actually stop this server and open the server in, the, in that directory. So assignment, uh, assignments and assignment, uh, sorry, assignments and assignment three solution. Okay. Yeah. So I have to run this here and I have to, uh, minus M server. Okay. Yeah, I'm running now server here inside this folder. Oh, it's already, okay. It's already working. So here you can see, I mean, it starts inside a cube, which is weird. I should have fixed that, but this assignment actually does something extra. First of all, it actually generates a map similar to Minecraft. So if you go back, you should see something that kind of looks like a bumpy terrain. Uh, it has kind of a, I'm using exactly the same idea as Minecraft. And here I have a camera, right, working. So you see it's not 100% and I can, and here also let me, I can go up. Uh, you don't have to do this for, uh, for B, but as you can see, this map has almost 10,000 cubes. And here actually, it's funny, we see actually the, the, the problem with um, unification, right? You see some, some, some um, alias here, right? Because um, we are too far from the textures, from the cubes. But if you go back, if you go actually closer, then actually it gets better, right? Uh, so now I'm rotating the camera, I'm going back. And then I can, can always try to fix it. Boom. Yeah, I didn't implement the full mouse camera. It's just, I'm actually moving with the keyboard. But here you can see what I want to show is that this, this is running with a world that is kind of close to uh, 9,000 and this is a generated world. I can, I can change that uh, quickly and I'm gonna kind of hide this for now here because I don't wanna show you my solution. Um, and I can, let me show you how it looks like with a fixed map. So it's, this is with a fixed map and this map has 677 cubes. And this is the performance with that. So this runs pretty smoothly. I don't have an FPS counter here, but this runs just fine, you know? Uh, so yeah, this runs just fine. And that one, again, runs with the other example runs with like 10,000 cubes. Still like I can move around. I see some, of course, some drop in performance, see some lag, uh, but it's doable, it's, it's interactable, okay? I just wanna set this as a benchmark. So, so you have an idea of what to expect. Again, uh, this, this, is my, this is our project. My solution is based on this, exactly the same rendering um, process. So my code does exactly the same thing. I didn't do anything, my, my cubes are specified the same way. Uh, my loop is exactly this one. I didn't change anything here. So if you take this uh, project that we've been building 
in the lamp sections, you should be able to run up to 10,000 cubes, just like with this kind of little bit laggy performance, but, but it's interactable. It's not completely laggy or anything like that. Right? So, uh, and if you have up to like a thousand cubes should be also run on easily like more than 30 frames per second. We saw that with the, with the fixed world. So yeah, you're just fine with two, two, two 3,000 cubes. It should be okay. Um, more than that, you're gonna start seeing some, some lags. And then when you get closer to 10,000, then it starts to get kind of laggy, uh, but still like interactable, okay? Can still visualize your world and stuff like that. Um, so how did I achieve this? Again, if you are watching this video and you haven't used my uh, or as a base code my my this this project that we have been building here in the lab sections, you might want to take a look at it. And more specifically, I want to guide you like what you could borrow from here to make your code better, or what parts here that I think they're doing. Uh, or kind of giving us this performance. Uh, first of all, is packing the geometries in one array, right? See, we pack our vertices per geometry in just one single array, and we avoid this, and we already created it as a new flow 32 array here in the class. This means that once I create a cube, um, I don't have to, to recreate it anymore, or I don't have to even like instantiate anything. I, I, we create this upon the inside the constructor of the cube. We have all the information in here. And, uh, and then when you draw the cube, we draw this whole vertex here, this whole, this whole list of vertices. I, I noticed that Professor James is doing something a little bit different, which is he's drawing cubes using triangles. So he's using his kind of, um, he, he has a triangle class and then he, to draw the vertices of the cube, he, he actually draws using these triangles classes, which means that for every face of the cube, you're gonna have two draw calls. And for the entire cube, you're gonna have two times six draw calls or 12 draw calls. For us, if you do it this way, if you have your entire list of vertices like this, you're only gonna have one draw call. For the queue. So this is the benefit of, um, of packing all the verses in one, in one geometry like this. It, and if you, if you can think like another way of Im even further improving the performance would be kind of imagine if you could combine cubes here, if you could combine some of these cubes and make just one cube out of like a lot of continue, like, because we have a lot of cubes here that could be, uh, connected, right? They could be actually um, be, uh, you could gather them in just one single geometry. Because for example, like this whole area here could be just one actually rectangle. Um, and a lot of cubes here could be co uh, connected or joined. Or we could kind of join, join these cubes together to have less vertices in this world. And this is what actually Minecraft does. Minecraft doesn't represent one cube individually. It actually, it store, it knows where the cubes are, but when it's render, rendering those cubes, it kind of smartly tries to generate the minimum amount of vertices to generate that world. So it looks like a lot of individual cubes, but, but actually you have this kind of compact geometry that represents the world and tries to minimize the amount of vertices. So I think the takeaway is, draw calls are expensive. So if you can minimize the amount of draw calls in your rendering um, engine, you get better performance. For this assignment, just packing the, the vertices of one cube all together already gives you good enough performance. Is this clear? Okay. Um, okay, second topic that, that I think is important is related to allocation of memory. So JavaScript is a fairly dynamic, mem uh, fairly dynamic language, sorry. And 
it allows us to create uh, instantiate objects like this with new with the new operator uh, for example here right and then at some point during the run in runtime javascript decides if that memory location is can be freed or not but to run this to do these checks which is a garbage collection system we call it uh, like that so these garbage collectors they are not cheap i mean they, they cost performance so if if the if the the interpreter of javascript has to kind of constantly check from this memory memory places and then kind of try to free them or not this is going to actually drop your performance especially in real time applications so in video games we try to avoid as much as possible allocating memory inside a loop that's why normally in video games you have this loading screen right so you load everything before the game or before a scene and then you play the scene with everything already loaded and you try to avoid allocating anything inside the game because that actually literally allocating memory and free memory costs time so that's why i did this previously without kind of telling you much but see that my new uh, my calls to new they are always outside the update so i call everything outside the update and then here i already have everything everything created right so here i don't i don't call any new here this is gonna help you improve uh, the performance considerably um, so just try to minimize the amount of allocation that you do inside your update that's why i think back in assignment zero we had this small discussion i think in uh, on, on piazza about oh why are we changing the vectors in place and not creating new vectors um let me let me go back to the library and discuss that right we were talking about for example these add operations here right you would do something like um this dot uh sorry other is a vector dot elements zero this dot um sorry this dot elements dot zero gets plus this right so we kind of put this comment here saying this function should change this vector and not create a new one because of performance so if you have this now like this see we are not creating anything here we are not calling new inside this function so this is good because now if i have to do vector operations inside my update which is very common for example especially if the camera when you're moving the camera right every time you press a keyboard you're gonna you call you're gonna call this function and this function would would do minus and pluses and multiplications with vectors and that would create extra vectors every frame if you had a new here if this was instead of this if you had let let's say z equals new vector here which people kind of wanted to do if if you had this before z dot elements like you would have this then right you would have this uh something like this and return z if you had this then for each operation you would create a new vector so this will cause you a lot of garbage collection calls and a lot because and this is only for the camera imagine if you actually had npcs or characters moving around in the world for every single character you would have these vectors moving the characters and you, every single operation you would create a new one so that's why i made sure to to make you actually implement it this way so you could actually not get a lot of problems with performance in now and in, in the, when you have a role now and out when our assignments like started to get more complicated 
okay? So again, avoid memory allocation inside the update. Right? Try to render, try to load everything before. Also, that's why I make a lot of global variables. This helps a lot. For example, I keep all my uniforms global and I load, I, I load all of them. See, like I already load all of them here in my main, so I don't have to load them again. Um, I don't know, I don't know what, um, no, so, sorry. I actually know what this function is doing, but if you don't know exactly what this function is doing, maybe there is memory allocation going on, going on there. And then you can, if you don't know, you could just like, to be precautious, like just actually do, do this in the main function. So try to follow this um, strategy of, of keeping everything as much as possible in your main function and just reading it in the draw. Okay, see here, my model matrix, everything I created in the constructors. So these matrices are all created uh, before. Um, again, yeah, if you have matrix creations here, also matrices are even more expensive than arrays. So think about it, okay? I just try to remove everything that you can, uh, every allocation from, from draw and, and from update. Does this make sense? Okay. Um, I think the third, the third topic about performance is about the buffers. So notice that also I create my buffer only once. I, I create my vertex caller UV buffer here. Again, this is a creation, this allocates memory, right? And there is this binding that happens and updates that happen setting. So we set up the buffer here. Um, and we do this only once. So avoiding or minimizing buffer setups, especially creation in the update. So try to update to only send the data like, I, like we do here. We only send the data. We only have this buffer data call here to update the buffer and the draw arrays. Uh, so we, that's it, right? We don't create a new buffer here every time. Um, and this, this also helps considerably. So I think that those are the three major, um, I think, things to do or to consider first if you are having performance issues. Um, and the order, I think, should be in, in that order that I talked about. So first, um, first pack, pack your vertices in, in, inside the geometries, like pack all your vertices and keep your float 32 array conversion here, not inside the update. Second, minimize memory allocation in the loop. Minimize memory allocation in here and here. Um, and third, avoid setting up buffers or creating buffers inside draw. With that, you should get a fairly decent implementation. Of course, you could even go further and do even more implementation. As I said, like the real Minecraft has a lot more uh, than, than this. But I think, yeah, the, the next step would be kind of joining all these blocks as much as possible in, in, a large, in large cubes or large segments or large chunks and then having last vertices in the world. Um, that's what I had for today. I think we are done.